See these geo dodges. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so sick. There's so today we're watching the Zero Geo Tool Assistant speedrun. This is made by Jarlic, and I'm the Zero Geo world record holder, and I'm super, super excited to um, to take a look at it. As you can see. The final time is a 3637 chat. My world record is a low 44. It's a lot, lot faster. Yeah, but anyway, uh, we're just gonna get into it. I'm super excited to take a look at it. And basically, this is a meme category where we need to beat the game without picking up a single piece of Geo. Um, but yeah, let's get into it, chat. Let's watch this amazing task. All right, so we have an impus display here. It's showing what's happening as well. I'm gonna try not to pause too much. So, how's the game audio, by the way? How, how loud is this? It's pretty loud. So the first thing you're gonna be seeing is they're gonna be doing these frame perfect nail turnarounds. And what they're using is, what they're doing is uh, using the game audio to, um, or sorry, frick, what am I saying? What they're doing is they're using the nail's knockback to save a little bit of time by pushing them back. This is not doable by humans, um, because the turnarounds need to be perfect. They need they need to be very, very perfect. And you're going to see them do that all over the place to save a little bit of time. And you can see the timer in the top right corner, by the way. It's right up there. So they're going to be starting off the King's Pass with an astronomical... 4928. The fastest a human runner has gotten is a 50, uh, mid to low 50, I believe. So, very fast off the very beginning. It's really crazy, actually. I think my. This is slightly shifted. There we go. That should be the screen. Not talking to Elderbug. You hate to see it. <laughs> the, the, uh, things on this little step. They're doing a early control there with the menu. Also, this is run on patch 1221, so you're going to be seeing a lot of imagery dropping, that sort of stuff. Right away here, you have the imagery drop. And the thing with Zero Geo is that you can't pick up Geo. This is where it starts getting interesting. So the Aspid Arena, we're locked in this arena, and we have to kill these Aspids to get out. But you know, the Aspids drop Geo. So I'm actually really curious to see how it does that. I want to see these Geo dodges. <laughs> There's even a little replay in the background. <laughs> oh, so Jarlik even added this little instant replay for us. Oh my god. That is mind blowing. <laughs> That's actually insane. <laughs> Holy shit. I was not ready for that. I thought they were just going to go over. Look at this insane movement as well. Look at these jumps. It looks like they're using freaking claw when they're moving upward this quickly. This is the crazy, craziest thing I've seen in my life. Holy shit. So, this is the next Geo part that's troubling in this category coming up right here. The False Knight Arena, there's these three little, three little husks that die once the boss drops down. And I'm assuming they're just gonna play around the Geo on the ground. Yep. <laughs> yep, they're just gonna keep the Geo on the ground. Just... <laughs> Little cheeky jump over that piece of Geo. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at the- Whoa! Wait, what the hell? Damn. They are just- It looks like they're cheating there, but they're basically just avoiding the mace hitbox. By just finessing on top of it. And pogoing the rocks down, because the rocks actually deal double your nail damage. So they're using the rocks that come down above, Using RNG manipulation, of course. Uh, so this task has RNG manipulation and perfect playback of inputs. That's the two main things that you're going to be seeing here. And the RNG manipulation is... Uh, I can't speak. The RNG manipulation is achieved through getting a consistent base value through manipulating the Linux system clock. So this is actually run on Linux. So you're manipulating the system clock. Of course, they're skipping the chest there because they don't want the Geo. Um... 
And the reason they're getting the city crest and killing the false knight there, by the way, is because they're going to be entering through city. Because if you're going to be doing through Grasmother or doing the shade skip, uh, first of all, you're going to need to kill Grasmother and avoid that Geo. And secondly, it's just faster to do it this way around. So they're going to be killing that. Um, or they're going to be going through city, the regular left side city entrance. And because they can't buy any stag stations, we'll actually have to leave city manually. Dropping off an amazing, like, 505? Or 405 Vengeful Spirit? That's crazy. So, I can bring up my splits later to compare. I'm going to be trying not to pause as much, because that's the main, um, main feedback I got from the other one. So, here's the next thing. You might be wondering, how did they kill the Baldurs? Because the Baldurs dropped Geo, right? Uh, so human runners, what I would do is I would kill the balder and immediately quit out to the menu. And then, uh, that's gonna spawn me below and the balder's gonna count as dead. So, what I'm curious to see is if they do that as well or if they just jump through the geo. Nice little cheeky strat right there that's a little bit faster. Please tell me they, they go through. <laughs> oh my god. Look at that perfect geo dropping into two little puddles. They just hop right over. <laughs> That's so beautiful. That is so beautiful. Oh my god. I already love this. I already love this. This is the best thing. This brings me so much joy right now. And the input display is a nice touch. So they've added... I think the way you, you're supposed to read it is the X is the, uh, the nail. And then the inputs. And then the Z is the jump. Okay, here comes another balder. I think they're just gonna jump over this one as well. Doing the insta-kill, and... <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Oh, that was really close in the beginning as well. Holy shit. This is nuts. I'm... I'm blown away. So what I would do there as a human runner is I would fireball the balder, have it die, and then reload the room by walking out to the right. And that would despawn all the geo and the balder would still be dead. And look at all the nail turnarounds. The small point, I think, I believe point zero two seconds each one of these saves when a task does them. So they don't really save that much time, but added together, they're a lot. They're probably a couple seconds by the amount that you do them. Nice one fireball there by the task. Very beautiful. Um... <laughs> Okay, so the next Geo problem that you really come up with compared to the regular Any% percent route would be the Moss Knight, which I think the Tass is probably just going to do the same thing, where they just fire- they do the double fireball strat from the right, um, just to have the, G the Geo of the, uh, the Moss Knight appear on the right- WHOA! <laughs> okay, but my clutch in world record was cooler, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna give myself some credit. The thing I do in my record was accidental, but a little bit cooler. <laughs> this one is just that, but on on crack. <laughs> I'm super happy about the replays, actually, because they, they let you see just how close the Geo, the Geo passes you. What did you do in record? I accidentally killed that little um, obble, and then I fall down and land precisely in between two pieces of Geo. The input display is cool. It looks like, you know, like a rhythm game, kind of? <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. They get some soul from the mossy. Alright, who wants to see Hornet get absolutely torn apart? Who wants to see Hornet get destroyed? So first they skip the, uh, the text there by fireballing. And she's just gonna be bullied in the corner. I believe this is this, the exact same fight as, uh, the any percent task the exact same inputs. Bye-bye, she's gone. Like, three seconds. You couldn't really see that behind the chat. I'm sorry, the chat is in the way for that. <laughs> Mothwing Cloak at a 747. That is wild. And they quit out here to go back to the bench. Uh, now, Fungal Wastes will actually be largely the same. There's not really that many things that we uh, could pick up Geo from. The one thing is if you were to do the human double dash mantis pogo strat, you would kill the uh, the large mantis, which you would have to dodge the geo from. So I, if I recall what I do, my record was a while ago, I don't really remember. If 
I if I recall what I do exactly is uh, I just don't kill it and I do some basic um, improvised explosion pogo. Look at these precise inputs. Yeah, this is not an AI. This is created uh, frame by frame by a human using RNG manipulation and just like a script of inputs that the computer will later play back. This is not the work of an AI or a robot or a machine. It's just a tool that a human, in this case Jarlik2, who is very cool, and you should follow their YouTube channel or whatever else they... Do you have any other things that you want to plug? Then do that in the chat, please. <laughs> Look at this movement. Look at the sh movement and the explosion pogo. I believe they're gonna do that. Yep, <laughs> that one. Just dashing under that mushroom. I think that's human movement. All right, I wanna see how they do this. Cause they don't wanna kill this one. Maybe they do anyway. No, they don't, okay. That's cool. <laughs> that looks so sketchy. Oh, here they're gonna do a mantis early control. This was actually found to be faster a couple months ago where they lure this mantis in a specific way so that it damages them just as they pick up the, um, the claw, which will let them get control back in, of their character. Um, this is run on patch 1221. One. That mantis early control is not actually uh, a thing anymore. So, because they picked up City Crest earlier, we're going to be going through City. Uh, we're going to be going to City from this side. And the reason is because we need Dive to get to Peaks. Uh, to get C dash for this category because either you could get Ismas or C dash and C dash is faster But oh, they're doing a nice early control here as well Because they want to open these gates because we're gonna be returning through here later because we can't buy the storeroom stag station because we don't have geo um, And they open both of those gates as well just so that they can get back there and what's interesting is because they want to get to peaks, right? So we're going to need dive because to get to peaks, you can either enter through getting lantern or getting dive. And that's be and because lantern, well, it costs 1800 geo, we can't get it, right? Didn't get the second lever? Yeah, they're going to get that on the way back then. Or do that? Yeah, or do they got in reverse in this case. They're getting a wall cling storage here with the elevator. Oh, that's so beautiful. So something that you might be noticing, chat, I forgot to mention this. They're not spamming wall cling storage like the other tasks. You might have seen the any percent no major glitches tasks. Uh, where the creator of that one, CC, chose to do the full wall cling storage abuse tasks. Um, this one is more to represent sort of human runs or more close to human runs. Where they do wall cling storages where humans could do them. So they're going to kill this one, obviously not going to be picking up any Geo. And they're going to be ascending here, and through the use of lever skips, you might have seen a lever skip in City earlier. They're going to be skipping the Soul Warrior to avoid the Geo, pick up from that. This is also just faster either way. And entering Sanctum through this side by hitting the lever from below. Look at this movement. This is just... Stuff like this is just crazy. Like, look at that movement. Look at those jumps. And of course, Sanctum RNG is not a problem for the task because everything is RNG manipulated. So it's really not an issue. Getting some soul on the way there. And they're going to be picking up Spell Twister because Spell Twister is actually pretty important uh, for this category. So obviously, they're not going to be killing any of these. Getting an early control off the damage there. I'm, I'm struggling so hard with keeping up with this. I'm trying not to pause. Uh, so Spell Twister is going to be useful because we won't get Shaman Stone. And we're going to be depending on Descending Dark. Because after we go to Peaks and we have Dive already, we might as well pick up Descending Dark. So, there's that. So I believe what it's going to do is it's going to do an early control here by taking damage and therefore avoiding the Scream stun. Oh, I want to see this fight. The Soul Master is a fight that's affected by a lot of RNG because there's a lot of teleports. This is already pretty cool. <laughs> wow. Look at that efficient movement. Oh, that was very close to that hitbox. God damn! Chat, that's a speed that I, a human runner, would do a Fury fight. That's like my average Fury fight with Soul Catcher and Twister. Or sorry, with just Soul Catcher. That is nuts. It's so incredibly fast. 
Oh, I know what they're doing here. So, you're wondering why they didn't take damage by the first one. This is also just really cool. The first dive of Soul Master does not have a hitbox. So they're doing this cool little ceiling strat to be able to fireball while they're doing the dives instead of having to wait for the um, actual... What you call it? That's, I guess, a perch of Soul Master. And there you go, there's dive in 13 minutes. I believe I get this in like 17 or 18, I'm pretty sure. It's not that fast, but consider that in Zero Geo, you really have to take some things a little bit... Um, a little bit um, safer to not pick up Geo. My world record is not very good in this category, by the way. I'm probably gonna get it back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get it. Ooh, the Geo dodges. So what they're doing here is the fake dives. <laughs> Look at that replay. Wow. So this is another scary part of Zero Geo. So you try to get these fake dives, which are inconsistent uh, for unknown reasons. You can't just get them consistently. Where you break the floor of the dive without going through. Which allows them to just move on to the next one without slamming into the enemies at the bottom. They're going to be leaving through the top side here. I'm expecting to see a walkling storage chain as well. Yep, look at them go. <laughs> yeah, this is one, two, two, one. They're not consistent on this patch. Um, but what they did there is that as a human runner, in my record, I take it very safe there. And after doing each dive, I quit out. And since um, getting dive is a hard save, I respawn in the Soul Master arena. And I just do that three times. So that's a pretty big time save that I could do as a human runner if I wanted to improve my record. So the interesting thing is, in a run like this, with this kind of route, with like a dive route, you would usually see the runner go up to storerooms now and leave with the stag station. Obviously, we don't have any geo, and we gotta get all the way to um, uh, to peaks now, because we have dive. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna dash there. <laughs> this is probably the weirdest thing about this route. This is the part that feels so off, because you're going to be doing fungal wastes in reverse. And that's very strange. So we're going to be leaving through this side, this gate. And actually, they're not opening the lever here, they're doing the gauntlet in reverse, which seems to be a little bit faster. And they're on one health as well, I literally just realized that. <laughs> just on one health there. That's obviously not a problem, they're not going to get hit, up, hit by anything. Doing these nice pogos. This movement, if you're a runner, if you're a Hollow Knight speedrunner, please look away. This is the most cursed thing you'll see. Reverse Fungal Waste is cursed. It's so weird. Like, look at this. Doesn't this feel super off? <laughs> These rooms are not made to be traversed backwards, I'm telling you. Yeah, this looks so weird. And they're going to be doing this climb here. I'm actually curious how fast they can do this. <laughs> Look at these jumps. They're so perfect. Wow. That's so smooth. It's so weird though. Yeah. That looks so off. That's off-putting. Wow, what a climb. So what they do here is uh, they're going to bench at this hot spring. Because later we're going to, after Sea Dash and Dream Nail... We're going to return to uh, Monomon, to the left here. So we're going to bench, they're going to equip... Oh wow, that is fast Charmony. As I was about to say, they're going to get equip Spell Twister here. This route, by the way, is identical to Human Runners so far. Uh, and I believe that's because just the Human route is fast. It's the fastest. And not because the Tasser is trying to just keep to it. I'm pretty sure. So we're heading to peaks now. Because we don't have any stag stations, we have to walk all the way across Hollow Nest when we want to get to a new location in this category. Wow, those three jumps right there, that was very crazy. I don't really know what to say. I'm trying to avoid just sitting down and going, oh wow, that's so cool, and trying to actually give interesting uh, interesting knowledge, give you some actual idea of what's, what's happening and the tricks that are being used. So we're gonna, they're gonna dive into here. Do an inventory drop right there, and we're into peaks. So the main thing in peaks is peaks are also not a very geo-heavy area. This is not really a worry uh, in this area, and this one is basically identical to any percent peaks. Of course, we're gonna see the uh, the pogax right there, and because this is a no walkling storage abuse task, uh, there's not gonna be any walkling storage pogaxing. Look at this movement, though. 
These cycles are... I think that's a cycle... That's a cycle fast... No. that's They're just going around the right. It's the same cycle. It's just the faster way to do it. And they don't, don't need a key here. Because they're not going to buy anything, obviously. So... Yeah, if I haven't said it already, major shoutouts to Jarlik. This is insane. I'm super, super happy with the fact that a zero Geotas exists, to be honest. And I think they should be really proud of what they've done. Because so far, this is absolutely stunning. I'm super impressed. So right here, we're just going through here. Doing the Homothity No Fireball. That's a pretty precise dash. And this cycle is going to be the same as human runners do, because that's just the fastest way to do it. Um, right here. It's going through. And we're going to see the underplat right there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the dive time. I'm actually curious to see... I, I'm going to open up my, P, my Zero Geo record on my phone. And I want to see what time I get. Because this is actually pretty interesting. Dive is like an 1820. I'm going to open the highlight right here. So now we've got C-Dash. So before uh, they're going anywhere else, the goal right now is to get to Dream Nail, which is what they're going to do through peaks. Oh, they pogo the rock. Good meme. <laughs> they pogo the Geo Rock. That's a quality meme. So on the way, because we need a strong damage output, before we drop down through the gap into resting grounds, the big pit, we're, they're actually going to get Descending Dark because we need a damage output source and we currently do not really have one in this category. Um... So here you have a dark room. This is mostly the same strat as humans do. Slight variations though. Make it a little bit faster. And let's see the D Dark. Let us see the D Dark. So the goal of this run, beat the game without picking up a single piece of Geo. Is the goal of the Zero Geo category. Okay, I found my record. Uh, right here. There's not much to say about this movement, just... Huh? Oh! Oh, I realize what they're doing. Oh my god. They're pushing the Crystal Hunter up to do the early control. Wow. I'm I'm actually shocked that's still faster. Because otherwise you wouldn't have a source to do early control here. They're carefully pushing up the, the, the buggy, the Crystal Hunter, so that they can shoot them while they're doing the cutscene to give them control back of their character by taking damage. That's crazy. That's really cool. And we're gonna have Dream Nail here. I'll give you a comparison to the time... What was Dive? Like 18? Or sorry, Peaks was like... Or um, C-Dash was like 18. My C-Dash in this run is a 2141. <laughs> I can check what time I get Dream Nail on my record. Yeah, my record isn't very good, as you can see. But it's also, you know, a human run. <laughs> So they're going to be dropping down here, uh, because the second time around, the Seer actually spawns a little bit earlier on this patch. So my record gets Dream Nail at 2432. This is obviously a lot faster. <laughs> Almost four minutes faster. That's nuts. We're really not that far into this run. Alright, so right here, they're going to be, be picking up Dream Nail, and then immediately quitting out. Um, and this is because we gotta we want to go back to the bench that we had set in in the Crossroads Hot Spring. Because now we're gonna head to Monomon, and Monomon is the first streamer we do in this one. So there's that. You might have been noticing the Geo parts are mainly concentrated in early game, and then in late game. The mid game is not really too worried about Geo, or whatever you would call mid game in this category. But there's going to be some Geo scares soon again. So what they're doing is they're basically going to Fog Canyon now. This movement is pretty similar to Human Runners. Just, you know, TAS. More optimal. Um, so just doing a drop through here. Basically Trinomi drop. It's the fastest way to do it. Slashing the Jelly here. Just to get some soul. Getting some soul of those. See dashing in. I believe just dashing in here is actually faster. 
But yeah, we're gonna fight Umu now. And remember that we have Spell Twister and Descending Dark. That's the loadout we've got. Actually, I think this is the one thing, a little bit of a mistake here. I think right side entry is fast, or left side entry is faster at this point. Um, I'm not sure though. It's probably, this might be faster with Tass. What do I know? Um, so I believe it is not possible to get a one cycle with this loadout with Descending Dark and Spell Twister. Remember, we don't have Shaman Stone, so the Descending Dark does not deal nearly as much damage. It's still pretty powerful. Powerful enough to, uh, to carry us through the run here. And we're going to see here, they're going to position them right there. And basically just spam dive and a nail hit in between to get more soul. Four dives right there. Second cycle, they're basically going to be dead right away. As soon as we get into it. Unfortunately, it's not possible to one cycle with this loadout. But getting a two cycle is still faster than upgrading or getting a better loadout. So, still worth doing. Right there. Very unfortunate. It's very close from being able to two cycle. Or from one cycling. As you can see, they, they were one dive short. Doing an inventory drop here. That's very satisfying to me for some reason. <laughs> and here's the first dreamer. Monomon, the teacher. I'm gonna be picking up her. Uh, the next dreamer we're getting is Hera, and then last will be Lurian. Because at this point, it's faster to just head over to Deep Nest through Queen's Gardens. And then from Deep Nest, we we're gonna get we're gonna get Tram Pass. And um go to city with trap pass from deep nest so something to mention is that you know we don't have lantern dark deep nest uh, is pretty prevalent in this run we're gonna be doing three runs on the uh, three dark deep nest rooms on the way in and then a lot more on the way out and the ones on the way out are actually a lot harder um we're probably not gonna be able to see much of what the task does you know what would be cool if you did like the task, Jarelik, um, for like a future task for Dark Deepness, if like you know how you have the um, the previews of the uh, or sorry the the geo playback cam, if you had like a little cam in the corner of the same room with the same movement being done in the lights when it comes to dark rooms. Yeah, the dark rooms obviously don't affect the task in any way because they just know what they're doing. When did, didn't you do the walkling storage on the Umidor? This is no walkling storage abuse task. It's faster to see dash and inventory drop if you're not going crazy mode. So right here, you're going to be seeing Queen's Garden's acid skip. You know it. You love it. No shenanigans here. As I mentioned, this is not a walkling storage abuse task. This one isn't going crazy mode. Um, but when, what's coming up ahead is actually the next Geo Scare moment. Uh, so the next Geo Scare moment is coming up right now and it is the Petra arena right here because once again we're locked into an arena with these three Mantis Petras that we need to kill to progress uh, this is a very scary part first Petra is doing the same strat as I do as a human and I'm assuming they just do that that's not really that scary if you do a good strat you get good patterns on them so they that's basically trivial <laughs> for Taz that's a very scary section for human runners though because the thing with Zero Geo, what makes it both a blessing, what makes it a good category, and what makes it a terrible category at the same time, is that, you know, you pick up one Geo by accident, and you're dead. The run's over. But at the same time, that's what makes it fun, right? Because that's like the challenge. What makes it interesting. That's what makes this... I have a very love and hate relation, relationship with this category, and that's probably why. Alright, time for some Dark Deep Nest. Uh, you probably can't see much here. I could probably turn up the brightness in uh, in post or something for the video, <laughs> if it helps. But they're basically doing these rooms as per usual, except they're using inventory drops instead of dives, which is faster. Uh, deliberately keeping their soul for the devouts. Now luckily, Beast Den is not dark in dark rooms. These rooms are basically the same as human runs. They're not really that difficult to do for humans as well. These first three rooms are very, very uh, trivial when it comes to dark rooms. That's a cool little wall jump. Very scary, though. Do not think turning up brightness works. I mean, it's not going to reveal what's, like, dark. But it's going to help you see more what of what's, like, the, the little bit of light part. So they can't skip Beast Den, of course. So they're going to be entering Beast Den. 
Unfortunately, missed opportunity to do the music glitch. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> but yeah, it's beast end time. So the devouts here are pretty scary. They're actually not that bad. If you just play calm and collected, you're not too scared about missing out on or by picking up the geo. They're doing a devout skip on the first one, luring the devout backwards and then just jumping over just like that. Which is actually pretty smart. It avoids the, the risk of picking up Geo on that one. And also get, lets you save your soul. It's faster than just killing the Devout. So, that's good. Very, very smooth movement upwards. Very rapid. Not too much to say about it. Will they save the Grub, though? Yay! Good task. I was about to say that this task is the worst if they didn't save it. But it's a good task. Right, chat? It's approved. So, just jumping off the Devout Geo there. That's pretty close. They're bouncing very high there. Yeah, look at that replay. That's kind of scary. <laughs> that's kind of scary. They saved two grubs? Yes, they did. And that's why this category is the best one. So they're... Qu Wait, what? Wait, you can do this? Huh. Well, the more you know. <laughs> There you go. And a Dream Nail early control upon re-entering. I had no idea you could quit out here. I've never seen anyone do that. Is that an MG? Apparently that's just doable. Just that no one did it. It might just be faster for Tass or something. So here comes Dark Deed Nest Part 2. We won't really see too much of what's going on right now. Uh, but... It's certainly Dark Deep Mist. We might add in... Actually, Jarlik, would you be down of making the, the rooms in the light and we'll just add in... Uh, I can just add it in to, like, the video, I guess. Just getting past the Devout. So what they're doing is they're actually going to leave towards the right. Right here. Um, and we're going to be trying to get to the right side. Out of the Dark Deep Mist, basically. And this is the last Dark Deep Mist room. This is where I throw... In PB, I get down to one health and I lose like 40 seconds. So this is the biggest thing I can improve in my record. If I ever go back and run this category. Which I probably will. I'm actually kind of down to do it. Just some smooth movement here. And they're C-dashing back left. So they're getting the bench here. And now we're going to be heading up to get Tram Pass. Because we got to get to City. And there's no stags or anything that we can buy. Because obviously we don't have Geo. So until we get this tram pass, we're basically stranded in deepness. So they're setting the bench there to quit out after tram pass uh, right away. Wow, okay. They're just going to fireball that. What a power move. Just jumping over the Geo. Like they just don't care. That's really cool, actually. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that's really cool. As you can see, they're not really killing that many enemies. Unless it is strictly necessary or it saves time. So that's, Zero Geo gets a reputation of being sc scarier and harder than it actually is. It's really not that bad, aside from the few spots where you have to kill enemies. Most of the time, otherwise, it's just faster to not kill enemies. So it's not, not really that big of a worry. Gonna be C-dashing over to Tramp Pass, picking it up and quitting out right here. And what they're gonna be doing now is heading right to the Tram. Going through all the Garped, uh, the Garped Maze room. And from there, we're going to be heading up to City of Tears through the Broken Elevator Shaft. That is followed by Watcher Knights getting Lurian. And then dropping down and leaving towards the right. In which they can't get King Station Stag because we obviously don't have Geo. We're going to leave through the Resting Grounds Elevator. We're going to go all the way up there. Uh, and then we're going to go to the one Stag Station that we actually have access to. Which is the Resting Ground Stag. And what's unique about the Resting Ground Stag... Is that it is open through a lever instead of through a um, through a geo toll, and if you have any stag open, you can always stag to Dirtmouth. So that's how we're gonna be heading over to um, the Hollow Knight after all of that. So we're gonna be moving upwards here, and this is like also a little bit of weird movement. This isn't done in too many categories. Going this way. Casually C dashing through, getting a nice lineup on that. I can't mention and I can't like 
say enough how impressed I am with this. This is super cool. That we have, like, before all of the other big categories that you could task, Darlick was like, wow, I'm gonna task zero Geo. <laughs> that's, that's a power move. That's a power move. That's a very fast climb, by the way. So I'm assuming they're gonna do a walkling storage here. This is something humans do. Actually, no, they don't. Um, they just choose not to. And another lever skip right here. This one you've probably seen before. Hitting that lever from below to avoid doing the entire gauntlet with the big husk. And that room right there, the right side of that room, does not light up because the knight has not hit the collision trigger for... Or sorry, the, the trigger for lighting it up. They do have walkling storage here though. And now it's time for Watcher Knights. This fight isn't that bad. Remember, they do have Descending Dark. And even though they don't have Shaman Stone, D-Dark is still very, very powerful. So, likely not going to be a problem. I'm expecting a pretty fast fight here. Of course, Dream Nailing the Watchers to get some Essence. I believe they die in four. Yeah. Three dives and a Fireball. And two Watchers at once. They're going to be trying to hit both of them as much as possible with the D-Darks. Just like that. Very, very good. When you have RNG manipulation on your side, it's not really that big of a worry to get them stacked together. So right here, they're baiting the left one so that they can stack together. Wow. <laughs> Those are some nice fireballs at the end there. <laughs> I'm a fan. Now a top tier meme would be to pick up the Geo chest. I don't think they're gonna do that. I would be very happy if they did. <laughs> if they pick up the Geo chest, I'm very impressed. Yeah, Jarlik, you forgot the Geo chest. You need Geo in this category, don't you remember? <laughs> and there you go, there's Lurian, that's the third dreamer. And now everything uh, comes down to getting to the Hollow Knight. They're doing another crit out here. I had actually never seen this before. The fact that you can do quit outs on the dreamers. I wonder if that's faster than NMG as well, or for human runs. Doing a nice inventory drop here. Can't even see what's going on, because they're just outrunning the camera. They're just that fast, really. Ah, oh, they don't get the chest. Missed opportunity. You hate to see it. You really do hate to see it. Okay, so it is done by humans recently. Scruffy introduced into 106. Okay, good to know. So now, we're obviously just going to be leaving. Uh, as per usual. I'm curious if they dive the door, uh, this floor. They don't, okay. So it's still faster to dash. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Because dive gets you stuck in the ground, they're just, there's zero below. Doing a C dash all the way over. So as I mentioned earlier, we're not going to be getting King Station Stag for obvious reasons of not being able to spend Geo. So you're going to be seeing some more strange routing. Or strange and strange, it makes sense in this category. It just looks weird. We're gonna, be we're gonna be ascending to resting grounds through the elevator. Uh, and using the resting ground stag, which is free, to get to Dirtmouth. And from there, we're just gonna fight THK. There you go, there's the elevator, right there. Doing a small wall cling storage right there, and C dashing over. So something that's good to note is that they already have a very good amount of soul right now. They're almost full soul for the Hollow Knight fight. So all, all that's left is the Hollow Knight fight. There's not any more Geo scares too much, but the ones we had, the cool Geo skips, the, the Geo clutches were very, very cool. That's probably the highlights of, of this task. I'm, I'm just blown away. <laughs> So what they're doing there actually is very good to note. So they're fireballing the toll, um, and then leaving the room, and then re-entering the room. So the stag travels there uh, instantly that way, and they can pause the time during the loads. So the fireball bell is actually a little bit faster. It saves like, I believe, a th one second and a third? 1.3 seconds, something like that. And... It's time for the Hollow Knight fight, chat. 
the end of this run. And this fight is basically gonna be D Dark Spam. It's basically D Dark Spam. Um, it's pretty exciting D Dark Spam because you can have RNG manipulation to get the perfect patterns. I'm actually pretty curious what D Dark patterns look like when they're optimal. That's gonna be interesting. So, right here, gonna break the chains right there. And it's time to wrap up the Zero Geo task. They're currently 35 minutes in. I can check what time I enter the Hollow Knight fight, actually. I think that would be pretty interesting to know. It's like 42 minutes, basically. 42 and a half, around that. Let's see this Hollow Knight fight. So as I mentioned, D-Dark fight. The important thing with D-Darks, that's actually a bit trickier, it's a little bit harder than it seems, is to hit all three of the D-Darks. So there's one hitbox when it comes down, one when it slams into the, the ground the first time, and then a third uh, shockwave, uh, which is the, the, the shockwave, obviously, that comes up after. And to be able to maximize your D-Dark damage, nice scream skip, by the way, on the first scream as well, is going to be to uh, make sure you hit all three. And another interesting, to mention, an interesting thing to mention is that Descending Dark on this uh, patch, uh, if you chain it infinitely, you can have infinite... De oh, wow. Well, they're done. <laughs> well, I guess we didn't need the, the fi final scream then. What I was saying is that the interesting thing is that you can chain D-Dark uh, iframes indefinitely on patch 1221 if you just keep spamming it. That's amazing. This is amazing. GG's, chat. Can we get a GG? Wrapping up the run at an amazing 36-37. Thank you so much, Derelic, for letting us watch this early. It was a blast. This is getting me really uh, excited to run this category again, which I'll probably do on the side. What an, Im what an impressive show of, um, of tasks, really. I want to put this out there, chat. This is Jarlik's first task. And it's this good. <laughs> this is their first time tasking. They went in as a beginner. And a couple weeks later, they came up with this. Very impressive. Once again, massive shoutouts to Jarlik for creating the tasks. It was just a blast to watch. And it's time for my end of video rambling. Um, I usually try to avoid doing reaction type videos, but since this task came out, I figured I had uh, the qualifications to actually provide some interesting insights and, uh, I guess, knowledge in the category. Um, I hope I was able to. I hope this was... A, I don't know if I should say educational, but if, if I hope it was... Uh, interesting in a way and I hope I added something to it because I want to avoid doing the kind of like just blank reaction content where I just sit there and say wow that was cool for like 40 minutes and then I don't add anything to it because that feels really cheap and it feels like I'm just leeching off someone else's hard work so that being said I'm probably gonna avoid doing reaction type videos in the future unless a very cool task comes out or something like that that I really really want to talk about uh, but yeah, expect some more high-effort videos soon. I know I keep saying that, but I'll actually get to making them at some point. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see ya. Bye!